dog run show. Well, the dog run show. I'm dog rice. Ba -ba 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 ping, ping, ping. Shh. Can you hear it? So can I. Good morning, the rice. Get up. Seven thirty-six in the morning. It's Tuesday. It's the twelfth. Of July 2022. What's up with you? Oh, I'm here. All right, uh, you know, I get up and I help you face the day. That's my job. My job is not to uplift you, but to get your goddamn attention. Good morning. All right, so you know what I do. I get up every morning since the 6th of Jan yeah, January, 2021, and uh, I make a ruckus. You're damn right. We're too quiet up in this motherfucker. You know what I mean? We, we just got too much goddamn manners. We're too goddamn polite. And we take it with a smile. Well, let me tell you something, brothers. Sisters, Hebrew. I don't tolerate that shit in public, no. I'm not going to make you comfortable. I'm not wearing that grin that warms the cockles of your heart so much. How I proceed to go about this penal colony for Negroes is without a goddamn grin on my fucking face. In protest, I guess, to, well, how dismally we're being treated. I mean, murdered and all. The fuck you got to smile about? And if you need a reason to get that goddamn grin off your face, just keep watching me. I'm going to bring receipts. All right! Tuesday. How you doing, everybody? Headed to work? Dressing for work? Are you driving to work? Are you almost at work? Are you ready to face the fucking day? Not before you see me. Because we're going to peruse the black news right after I chop it up a bit. You know, got a few topics I'm going to discuss. Uh, Detrina came at me this morning. Oh, she came at me. You know you did. And, uh, why don't we talk about something uplifting? And for a minute, for a moment, for a second, I entertained it. And then I came to my senses and understood that I'm not that guy. You go to Brother Yacoba, Dante Fortin, get uplifted. Me? <laughs> I'm just going to get your goddamn attention. All right, now, today's topic, let me explain. I've had this topic on my mind for a, a few days. I've watched the circus. Uh, January 6th today, another hearing, another piece of the puzzle connecting the madness to one another, you know. And as their secrets are exposed, as those they admire are proven to be less than stellar individuals. I gotta tell you, all this ramping up for what you're gonna do to people, that shit don't play with me. I'm a Negro in America. I've seen what justice looks like applied to you. Doesn't look like anything applied to us. And so, today's topic friends, family, to the bottom of today, uh, is they're playing with themselves. And it's not a game. Did you hear me? That's what we're going to talk about. These folks are playing with themselves. And it's not a fucking game. It's not a game. Now you hear what I'm saying. All this maneuvering, all these hearings, all the exposure, nobody that counts is in jail. Now, they got enough evidence where if it were applied to this face, well, you'd never see this face again, ever. I mean, they'd lock me in a room and throw away the room, okay? But what we have before us is an exercise in toying around. They're going to go through the motion, show you the evidence, do nothing, do something, go to the Supreme Court. It's all in the Supreme Court. How they're diddling with themselves is in the Supreme Court. Let me tell you why. 
You can convict Trump in Georgia. You can convict him in New York. You can convict him in Philly. You can convict him anywhere. But eventually he's going to go to that Supreme Court that he supremely stacked so supremely in his fucking favor. And those six judges are going to simply dismiss, remove, reverse, cast off any kind of accountability that may have been administered by Negro faces. And I want to say that pointedly. The reason we know they're playing with themselves, you need to see who's going after them. Look at the faces of the prosecutors calling caucasity into account. Oh, they're feeling some kind of way about this. It seems inescapable. The measure of justice about to be meted out, it seems unavoidable, but they're playing with themselves. See, they can't hold the powerful to account because the powerful feel unaccountable. And so they're in lockjaw step with conflict, and it will end in civil war. There's no escaping the trajectory these people are on. They're playing with themselves, folks. And it's not a fucking game. Now look, you probably want, want to know why I chose that. Well, here's the deal. Motherfucker playing with themselves. You, you, you just slowly back out the fucking room, right? Well, Negroes, that's what I'm, that's what I'm intending and in, in telling you to do. As we watch these people play with themselves, I need you Hebrews to slowly back away from the activity and just make sure that you are nowhere near when the climax of it all comes to fruition. Remember, they're, they're really fucking with themselves. They're not going to do shit. They can't put Trump in jail. They got too much shit on him. They got too much shit on everybody. They're not going to be held accountable. They're thumbing their nose at the very justice they hold everyone else to. And let me tell you something, folks. It's going to end up in fur flying. Something like that. Anyway! I didn't mean to, you know. Okay, uh, you know, uh, Detrina and I were talking about a movie. Y'all remember this movie, Planet of the Apes? Planet of the Apes? I like to think of the reflective uh, circumstance of reality, how, it, how one thing reflects another, how truth can be seen in many, many corners of the media and movies. And I look at that Planet of the Apes, and I got to say, you folks, uh, if you watch that movie, if you watch it carefully, you can almost see how it parallels with today. Because I got to tell you, I'm feeling sharper. I sense all Negroes are getting sharper, you know, less, you know, less tolerant of the bullshit, more focused in what they have to do. They see the forest for the trees. I see, I see them coming into focus. And yet, with our oppressors, I see a dumbing down of their society. The stupid of them, the naive, the gullible are the ones taking to the streets demanding action on things that require no action. Individuals believing a lie so magnificent and so well put together, so obvious, and swallow it whole! And it calls to account the last scenes of that movie, Planet of the Apes, where Woody Harrelson seems to lose the ability to speak. And I only wonder how deep the rabbit hole will go with their deterioration. And again, I wonder as well, is it the sun? What is it that is dumbing down America? The idiots have control of the levers of power, and we're all in peril. Prepare yourselves, folks. It's going to be a bumpy ride. All right, Herschel Walker. So listen, uh, Hirsch, <clears throat> Herschel got in front of a crowd and talked about uh, how he would or would not address the issue of air pollution. And I want you brothers and sisters to understand 
But this ain't fucking funny. It's irritating. Here's what he said. He said he wouldn't fix air pollution in this country because the efforts that he put into fixing that particular air would somehow find their way over to China. He said that the good air would somehow end up in China. He said this in public. Herschel fucking Walker said this in public on a campaign trail to be elected to the Senate to take another confused brother, Reverend Warnock, out of play. But I need you to understand the idiocy is not the rub. It's the fact that that is who the GOP finds an acceptable Negro. A throwback from the 50s, a caricature, a fossil. One of them brothers that say, boss, real good. Well, he looks like he said that most of his goddamn life. And I just wish somebody would get Herschel Walker, man. I wish somebody would just pull him aside and let him know that they're not laughing with you, they're laughing at you, they think you're a clown, a buffoon. And they have you out there representing us. Can we get Herschel? Okay. All right. That's about what I had this morning. You know, they're, they're playing with themselves. You folks stay the fuck out the room. Okay. If you if playing with themselves, stay the fuck out the room, folks. All right. Black news. Here we go. What do we have today? Black man paralyzed in police van to file a civil rights suit. That's the only recourse we have when they fuck us up money. Oh, they'll pay like they wait. With the thoughts and prayers might come millions, but meanwhile, this man will never walk again. They talk about the disparity between the killing of white suspects versus the killing of black suspects by police. They talk about this. And they talk, there's an article here where somebody says that they need to start publishing the videos of police killing people who aren't black. And to that, I say all the stats that they put out in an effort to get that established. I got to tell you, the fervor with which the bullets are thrown at Negroes differs from the fucking intent and attitude at which bullets are thrown at their own. So as much as seeing the equal treatment, I have to say it's not delivered with the same je ne sais quoi, you know, feeling and intent. So don't talk to me about wanting to see other folks murdered by police, killed by police during interactions with police. I don't give a fuck because we know there's no hatred like Christian love. I had to fit that in. You know, I posted that earlier. Yeah, I hope he gets money. Continue winning, baby. I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody's Tuesday's doing well. I hope you're heading into work, um, you know, ready to face the day without a goddamn smile on your face. I look up Black News, and they tell me that a drug dealer has been sentenced to die or been sentenced after he used a black mamba to murder somebody. Well, that's interesting. Uh, I don't know, how do you, is a snake going to stand trial? I don't get that. So a black, a black inmate is suing a Kentucky prison after he says guards forced him to cut his dreadlocks so he'd have searchable hair. You want me to read that again? Okay. A black inmate is suing a Kentucky prison after he says guards forced him to cut his dreadlocks so he'd have searchable hair. You got to have searchable hair, guy. So we got to, you know, I mean, do, do you feel special? Uh, do you feel special? I just want to know. I mean, they got, they got something with us everywhere we look. Everywhere we go, they got a fucking problem with Negroes. Everywhere we go. It's our hair, it's skins, the way we talk, the way we walk, the way we dress. We're in the wrong neighborhood, selling cigarettes on the street. Getting stopped by police. Sleeping in our fucking beds. How dare you. I mean, god damn. So much attention. 
so much neglect. You'd think there's just something about Negroes. I don't know. I hope he wins. Uh, I hope he wins the suit. I do. Uh, Portland man arrested for anti-Asian remarks, and then he threatened victim with a black hose in a road rage incident. Now, the reason I decided to, to read this is because first, I'd like to know what anti-Asian remarks are. That doesn't make any sense to me. I've never heard any. Uh, I think it's uh, ridiculous. Uh, and also, the hose that he was threatened with was the hose that you use to vacuum out the interior of a Pacifica or Honda family van. Everybody. So his life was obviously in danger. There's no such thing as Asian hate. I'll say it again. There's no such thing as Asian hate. Nobody hates Asians. It's ridiculous. That'd be, be a waste. There's nothing to hate. It's ridiculous. Please stop. There's nothing like the hatred for Negroes. It accomplishes so much. Now, when you talk about Asian hate, you talk about Negro hate, you talk about these, you compare the things. I'm not finding anybody traveling 200 miles to attack an Asian community. I've not seen that. I've not seen, you know, Asians getting pulled over and, you know, for traffic violations, which, of course, that's going to happen. But they're not going to get murdered or killed because, you know, you know. So when you talk about Asian hate in relation to the hatred for black people, it doesn't even compare. And I want you to stop. All right, black man freed from prison after 44 years. It says in lawsuit he was framed by officials for attempted rape. I'm sure he was. 44 years in his life. Framed. Can you imagine all the, all the injustices meted out against black men? During those times that have gone unanswered, can you just imagine? They've got a whole lot to answer for, and they know it. You know what I mean? I mean, they laid a foundation for retribution that is uh, impressive. I mean, and the receipts, the facts, I mean, they're all there. I, so we got color photos. We have, we have, we have fucking witnesses. We have, we have folks that were the complainants still living. Oh, there's so much that America is going to answer for in the treatment of Negroes. And they know the time is coming. They know they feel it. That's why they're getting nervous. It's why they don't want CRT taught in their schools. They don't want their children to know why what's coming is coming. They don't want to associate the soon-to-be punishment meted out against this country for its treatment of Negroes. Oh, yeah. I know y'all thought y'all was going to get away with that shit. I know you did. I mean, you got the wealth. You got the inventions. You got the discoveries. You got the health benefits. You've got the warmth of the Negro smile. And it's all going to come at a goddamn cost that you're going to pay. I drift. Continuing, baby. I didn't mean to make anybody nervous. Joe Biden loses base as black voters want different 2024 candidate. A poll. Well... <laughs> I guess they're going to vote for somebody else Democratic who's going to do nothing for them when they get up there. You don't learn shit from Obama. You don't learn shit. From, you don't learn shit. And I just keep giving the vote that should go to the kingdom to these madmen. These men that have created crime bills locking up black men still in jail. Can you imagine that? I mean, we live a long time. Crime Joe Bill. Remember Crime Bill? Crime Bill Joe. There's still brothers in jail right now from his efforts in 93. Do you know that? Now he's losing his base of black voters. Cry me a fucking river. Moving on! Newt Gingrich. Anybody know Newt Gingrich? He used to be Speaker of the House. Uh, he's from uh, Massachusetts, I believe. Newt Gingrich. He was used to be, you know, he was a, you know. He says that liberals are pushing a cult of anti-white racism. 
There's no such thing. There's no such thing. I mean, the victimhood, the cry of victimhood, just permeating throughout this society. How can the people that run the fucking country be the victims at the same time? How can the people that have the majority, the wealth, the power, the influence, how are they victims? How are they victims every fucking day? How is this possible? I just don't know. I just, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. You know, maybe demographic, maybe a little bit of, you know, color schematic. But money, power, influence, politics still with them. Nothing's changed. History has not adjusted. It's just the same history they taught in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. Nobody got nervous. Nobody got in their goddamn feelings learning about slavery. I didn't see kids come out of school all shocked and shaken because they learned about what their ancestors did. I, didn't, I had never... But now, past 2019, toward 400 years that we've been in this place prophetically so and now suddenly they seem to be coming unglued they seem to be losing their shit I, I'm not like I mean what is this cult of anti what are you fucking talking about nobody motherfuckers ain't even thinking about you motherfuckers like that and that's the truth motherfuckers ain't even thinking about you motherfuckers like that shit ain't even on our mind I'll tell you what it is. It's fear. It's the anticipation of something on the way that they feel. And you coincide that with the technological advances that they're trying to really bring into focus. I'm telling you, Brother Yacoba brought it into focus and in saying they're trying to release the captives locked away by God Almighty and they're, and they're getting as much technological help from these beings as possible because they see the forest for the trees. Wicked man runs when no one pursues. Ain't nobody chasing these motherfuckers. Ain't nobody chasing you motherfuckers. Ain't nobody cares about you. And y'all are coming completely unglued. While we seem to be getting a bit more focused. I've noticed it everywhere. I've seen it Everywhere, brothers, sisters, waking up, understanding who they are, looking seriously toward the future, understanding that there just might be one for us. So, Newt Gingrich aside, <sighs> hope they're okay. All right, uh, Kevin Hart jokes about Will Smith Chris Rock during stand-up and what he said. I don't give a fuck what he said. This is what I mean. This is what I fucking mean. We got, we got him representing black maleness. These three principal individuals now are being held out as an example to all of us and them. And we can't allow or even tolerate that they begin to commiserate amongst themselves for press. Let me tell you something, man. Kevin Hart said he'd never wear a dress. I recently saw him in a dress. I thought that was interesting. I don't know why I bring that up, but moving on. I'm just reading the black news. Relax. All right. Uh, my wife's racist mom moved in. I'm wondering what it's costing you. Well, it's, <laughs> what is it costing you? Your, your mental health? Your... I mean, I can't even, my wife's racist, what, what is this shit? They don't have anywhere to go now? They're moving in with their kids? No, society doesn't want the motherfuckers anywhere. So now they're moving in with their children. That's, that's some cold shit. Do you see how this society is unfolding in front of Negroes? Do you see them show their ugly face to us and let them do so? Because we need to see it. I mean, if we smile, they'll smile. Perhaps if we get that fucking grin off our faces, maybe they'll show us their true faces. My God. 
You're everywhere. Oh, Jesus. All right, well, uh, what do we got? Eight o'clock? Whoa. I think I'm done. I feel good. Uh, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to overwhelm. I don't want to saturate the market. I want to make you guys comfortable. I want to make sure that you get to work in just such a fashion. I need your mental to be correct. You're about to face this shit. They're stirring the pot. They're playing themselves. And pretty soon, it's going to get real, real interesting. And I just don't want you to be caught smiling. That's all. Can you imagine what will happen to you if they decide to lose their minds? How safe do you think you'll be in this country if these folks start throwing bullets at each other? And what do you think they'll do next? You better understand, they're setting the rules, they're setting the tone, making guns as accessible and as free to carry as possible. They're in their feelings about being replaced. The right wing of it all seems to be, you know, affecting their trajectory. And what do you think? What's on their minds? What do you think they think when they see you? You need to understand everything's not being revealed. Everything is not as it seems. And as Negroes in this country, here against our will, brought here in chains, that is how they will continue to treat us until we are delivered from this place. So don't get comfortable. In fact, pack your shit. You're leaving. If you expect to survive, What's coming? The destruction of the United States of America. It is appropriately on the way. Deservedly so. Absolutely. Anyone that determines not to leave this place with an opportunity to do so will be destroyed or put in chains. And anyone willing, perhaps, to believe that we are in fact Hebrews may decide to come with us. I hope people have plenty of goddamn sense. All right. 803. That's it for me. I'm good. Okay, folks. I got shit to do. I got people to call. I got money to make. I want you to have a damn good day at work. I know some of you are running a little late. I know you're trying to get into the Just relax, all right? You'll get in there. Before you go. Before you go. Just slow down a little bit. Slow down. You still got me in your ear, right? I'm on the side. You're just walking, listening to me end the show. I know. You're looking toward that front door of yours, aren't you? You see that office, that building you've been walking in and out of for five years. It's just there in front of you, behind it, all the folks who you think you know are behind those doors, and they're ready to greet you with a smile. Well, today, today I challenge you, after all we've been through together this morning, today I challenge you to greet them with something a little different. If you go in there today, slow down. Affix your face to express the seriousness of the circumstances with which you live and suffer every day in this country. Let's not show content today. Let's not. As you reach for the door, I want you to remember, we're dying every day out here just because we're Negro. That's right. Now reach for that door. Reach for it. Wait! Before you go in, do me a favor. Get that goddamn grin off your face! Okay. Have a good day.